The more we dig, the more we find. Here we have an image of a diploma for the American Pacific Exposition and Oriental Fair for Portland, Oregon in 1905. So 1904, they have the St. Louis World's Fair. One year after, we get this one in Oregon. This diploma is very interesting. As we go down to the bottom, we have a photo and we can clearly see in the background two airships, both looking different. They normally don't show this form of transportation in these photos. They normally blank out the sky. But as we look up all of these countries, we see the big ones. And then we see Caucasia. Have any of us heard of a country in the 1900s named Caucasia? I personally have never heard of Caucasia, which is similar to Tartaria. All of these countries that we were never told about. But this one wasn't hundreds of years ago. This was 1905. So they are now, in my opinion, lying and telling us that Caucasia or Caucasus is a region that has a bunch of countries in it, including Russia, which we all know have connections to Tartaria. But let's take a look at this list again from 1905. They are already listing Russia on this map with Turkey, France, Holland, Germany, Switzerland, Italy. All of these are countries. They are not regions. I'll say it again. These are countries. Why would they then throw a region in there randomly? That doesn't make any sense. I think we are finding, in my opinion, that there is more land that we aren't being told about that was here in the 1900s. And I think Caucasia is being hidden from us right now. Welcome to episode 48 of my lunch break. I hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new, welcome. <laughs> Thank all of our sponsors over on Patreon. Thank you to FlatEarthDave.com. You can check out his app. I'll put the link in the description and you can use my referral code, MLB. The app is awesome. It shows a lot of videos that are really hard to find. They've got them all in great playlists. He also has my lunch break on the homeschool section of the app, which is really cool. Thank you for that. Thank you to Rebecca K, Don Gaston, Jason Brunson, Christopher Arietta, The Lady Lacey Show, Edwin Johnson, Al Chen, Chuck Templeton, David and Sherry Ferguson, Joy Lee, PNR, Dale, DJ Click Track, Edward and Brianna, Edwin Rice, Kyle Glasscock, Leslie Pipkins, Stephanie Nolan, The Burlesons, and Two Spirit. You guys are all awesome and helping this channel out a lot. We were talking about Caucasia. Really quick, I wanna just throw this in here. That there is another country that is clearly blurred out. I wonder if we weren't supposed to see that one. So we were given a photo with the airships in the background in the sky. So I went digging and found this photo from 1905, World's Fair in Oregon, showing more airships. And since I haven't really covered this topic yet on this channel, in my opinion, and a few others, this form of travel was all over the place. It wasn't just created in the 1800s, and the Hindenburg event was used as a scare tactic to make these airships look faulty, removing this free energy form of transportation technology out of our lives. Do you really think that they put a gas in these airships that would be so incredibly flammable and fly them over massive cities? Or does it make more sense that this Hindenburg event was a planned event to get rid of this free form of travel and wipe it from the history books? Here we have a photo of one of these airships sitting in between the two spires of the old world building. You can see that they use these spires to electrically charge these airships. And this was common knowledge. And in the very next photo, it's leaving the port. We are not given the truth about our history. This isn't something that we are ever told about in our mainstream schooling system all over the world. Do you find that odd? Let's keep digging. We see that the US Army had this technology in the 1800s, as well as the Navy. Now, this is a photo from July of 1931 and we clearly have an airship charging at the top of this building. So we have a lot going on here. And this was within the last 100 years, an airship charging at the top of this tower. Did you think they only charged at the top of buildings? Of course not. They had charging docks in the middle of the water. Here we have a photo of the US Navy airship in 1924, charging from this boat. Now let's zoom in on this charging station to get a good look at what's going on here. Now this is a technology that we were never told about. This is hidden from our timeline. A clear proof that there is much more to the story than what we've been told. Especially since this was not thousands of years ago. 
and shows how easily history can be rewritten. This technology should be common knowledge at this point. Here we have another angle in Rhode Island of the charging taking place. These airships were not powered by gas or simply helium. And if we switch angles here, we can actually see the charging tool that was used right at the top of this tower. They're clearly about to connect to the airship. So this, in my opinion, is clearly explaining what's going on at the top of these old world buildings. They were charging stations for the airships. They have the same features, and I guarantee you that they still turn on, since this was not that long ago. And I'm gonna take this time right now to answer a lot of people's question. Will we ever find the truth? As we keep uncovering more and more documented evidence, we're gonna find that the previous civilization was not that far in the past, and our current structures hold so much more technology than we ever truly understood. So in my opinion, yes, we are gonna find the truth about all of this. We are uncovering the truth faster and faster, and this community gets bigger and bigger with more and more people sharing their thoughts and knowledge. The mainstream history is becoming comedy hour at this point. So we can clearly see that these buildings all around the world may have had a second purpose, but they were without a doubt here to generate free energy specifically for airships. And once you realize this, then we can go deeper and ask the question, was the previous civilization capable of using these buildings to power their flight that were so much more powerful, so much faster, and so much more incredible than an airship? I believe that they fully understood this technology. They were the ones that constructed it. They had this technology and were able to travel through the air so much faster than we can today while using the Earth's natural energy. These buildings are technology. They are able to extract the energy and are able to turn it into a fuel. If you're looking for a why, a motive to suppress this technology, well, it would 100% benefit a civilization, us. It's free. There is zero benefit to free transportation, free energy. Do we need to go further for the why? So when you go around your town now, and see the top of these buildings, we can all understand how popular this form of transportation really was. It was everywhere. Now we have talked about Tartaria. We have shown in this episode in the beginning how there are possibly more countries and more land, such as Caucasia. So we have Tartaria, but we also have Barbaria, where you would get the term barbarians. And of course, again, have any of us heard of a place called Barbaria in history class? Maybe you have now. But in mainstream history, this is not something that is taught to us. We're not being told the truth about any of this. And we have many maps of a land called Barbaria. And I believe that these maps are from the previous civilization. They are not presented to us in the mainstream history. So it's our job to go find them in places that are not easily accessible. And in order to find something, you have to know what you're looking for. Thankfully, we do. And then we have this map from the early 1800s showing a land that was to the east of Portugal, that was named Barbaria, that is no longer there. It was south of France, west of Italy. So where did this land go? Also, this map shows that Barbaria had islands. And are these points on the map ley lines? What an incredible map to look at. Obviously an event took place very recently, definitely proving that we've had land here that is no longer here. These maps are so detailed, yet these places are no longer here. And we have this group on the map who are most likely a depiction of the barbarians. Oh, and should I tie it back in with the airships? Can we just zoom in? Right above this disproportionate guy with the red and green on? What is above his head in the sky? That wouldn't be an airship, would it? You tell me. And if anyone can read that in whatever language it's written in, I'd love to know what it says in the comments below. Now I emailed this company that I'm gonna keep hidden. But with a little digging, we can all figure out who this is. But I emailed them and they purchased the architecture firm Bradley & Bradley. Since they're an existing architecture firm, and it's not from thousands of years ago, they should have the construction photos of the National Guard Armory. But again, we are given another response that fits into what we're talking about here, that these are not the actual builders of these structures. If they built it, they would have at least one picture of construction somewhere in the world. But time and time again, as we have documented here so many times, they never have this on record. So they replied to me saying, we acquired Bradley and Bradley, architects and engineers in 2016, and I have not come across any construction photos from the National Guard Armory in their files. So they go on to say, to contact the Rockford Public Library to see if they have it. And then two sentences later, 
saying that I believe this information is currently being held at the Hart Interim Library during construction of the new downtown library. So I'm going to be contacting them and I'll keep you all updated on the situation as we continue on with it. If you're interested in hearing what we find, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Very interesting stuff. Yet another place that has zero confirmed documentation on these construction projects all over the world. It's very strange. And this is why we are looking into it. Exposing something that was hidden for far too long. And for a bonus today, I have a lot of things that I want to share that I've found in my research. And I don't want to just brush over them, but I do want to share them with you all. I found this photo from Portland, Maine of the old city hall. In their newspaper from 1888, they wrote, that it was built in 1825 and was used in 1832. So this was going on like 200 years ago and you can see what they're all riding around on. They were able to build these kind of structures so fast apparently that after 63 years, this thing was so outdated and needed to be demolished. And it's interesting because this exact story is given to us all over the USA. And in all honesty, it's all over the world. It's weird how we were told that they lived in sheds, yet could afford to knock down relatively new structures like this. Oh, and we are told that they built this thing with a population of like 8,000 people. Like I said before, anyone on a horse, a donkey, and anyone who had a wagon, a shovel or a chisel, was born with incredible architecture skills in the 1800s. It's incredible stuff. And I know some of you have mentioned this topic in the comments below. Well, here is a conveniently half-destroyed photo from the 1904 World's Fair. And if we just zoom in a little, you can see what this exhibit was. And here's the description we are given. Served as a fair attraction in a working hospital. This is normal for a fair attraction? These fairs have a much darker purpose than what we have been told. Just read that last sentence. They were brought from hospitals to the concessions. Well, they were brought from somewhere. And this is such a weird thing. Using common sense, how many mothers would allow their kid that is born early to leave the hospital to be, in their own words, an attraction at a fair? Let's use our brains a little now. These are not coming from the hospital, in my opinion. If you want me to get more into this, I will. But I think we get the point that this was an operation to populate these cities again. And when did Ellis Island start taking immigrants? New Year's Day, 1892 perfect time to start an operation. You don't find it odd that right around the exact same time period as these World's Fairs, you have these operations to refill the USA back up with a brand new batch of people. Now let's go back to the airships. Here's a photo from 1935. After they removed the airships from our timeline and they were using the hangar for the airplanes now. And look at the size of this hangar, just to prove how massive these airships were in comparison. The amount of people that could have been on this airship were in the thousands. Here's a sketch of the interior of an airship, and you can see they were incredible. They had bedrooms, dining areas, all of the things that you would do if you were going to treat a society with respect, instead of our form of travel now, where we are all just jammed in next to each other and forced to suffer for hours. So I know this isn't a real photo, but honestly, who knows at this point what the previous civilization was capable of? What kind of things were in these airships? that we aren't being told about. Water parks, events. We know these airships were real. They were everywhere and they were massive and not a part of the narrative. They put the brakes on them really quick to trick our civilization into thinking that we're advancing into the airplane. When in reality, we had it made with the airship. Now, there are so many pictures of these vehicles all over the place and they were definitely interesting to look at and wonder. So I wanna make sure that I'm able to share these pictures here with everyone so that you don't have to go on a scavenger hunt all over the place for them. And I wanna make this point clear if I haven't already. These airships predate the airplane and they'll even admit it in the mainstream narrative that the airship was supposedly invented in 1852, which is a lie. It was long before this and we know that here. And the airplane as we've covered was handed over to us in 1903. So 51 years later, rapid speeds, new technology just flying at us, literally. The problem with the 1852 date is that we have depictions of airships that predate the 1800s by civilizations. Knowing this information frees your mind. You are able to think for yourself. You are no longer trapped in the ridiculous mainstream society game that just goes around and around and drives people insane. You can step back and enjoy your life, knowing you are important 
your life is much more meaningful. This place that we all live was filled with great technology, a civilization, in my opinion, that used free technology, possibly no debt, possibly a place where everyone was able to take the time to enjoy their lives instead of working to struggle. Again, it's very important to know this since we all live in this place that 100% changes and forms through your thoughts, through all of our thoughts. And when you have a different level of knowledge, your thoughts change for the better. It's very important to know that you are important and your life is much more meaningful than you were ever made to believe from day one. I mentioned on X a few weeks ago that I had something that is going to 100% destroy anyone's belief in the fake history that we've been told. I'll be putting that in episode 49. It's gonna take the narrative and rip it right in half. And I look forward to doing that. We're getting more and more badge members, Patreon members, and subscribers, which is helping more than you guys realize, and also allows us to get boots on the groundwork. I'll be going to New York within the year, and also trying to plan a trip to Europe, and hopefully Minnesota. A lot of great stuff on the way. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I will be back very soon with much more. See ya. Don't trust what you're saying. Don't listen to your senses.